In this video, I'm going to show you, I'm going to pull back the curtains. I'm going to show you how to do so much more with your WordPress website versus just making posts and pages. I'm talking about, you're going to learn how to create custom post types where you can put other types of information that doesn't really necessarily fit in a post or a page. And if you own a WordPress website or you are making websites for clients, now after watching this video, you're going to be able to make more dynamic solutions for them and it's going to end up making your website that much more powerful content and feature rich. Hi, my name is Adam from WPCrafter.com where I make a ton of content to help you get better results with WordPress faster. If you're new here, consider clicking on the subscribe button and if you don't want to miss a thing, click on the notification bell and YouTube will let you know when I upload a new video. So this is going to be a longer video because I'm going to show you something very fundamental. You're going to learn how to create custom post types. You're going to learn how to create custom custom fields. You're also going to learn how to make templates the for the front end, the visual templates for those custom post type options. And I couldn't be more excited to bring this video to you. I'm going to be using something called pods. It's free and it's open source. I'm going to show you that in the video. We're going to use pods. I'm also going to show how to create templates with your page builder. So you're going to want to stick around for that as well. Just be forewarned. It's going to be more than one page builder. So if you're a diehard fan of one and you hate the other, just know you can just skip that part you know this video can be for everyone just skip that little part but I'm showing you the exact stuff that I'm using right now to power my website and I have can't wait to share this information with you so okay enough talking let's just get started with this video so here is my fresh installation of WordPress and you can see right here it just has the default theme. So before I get too much into the pods I want to kind of make the website look better than this. So I'm going to just download a theme really quick and get a beautiful website going. So I'm going to go to themes, add new and I'm going to put the free Astra theme. Okay here it is. I'm going to click on install and I'm going to go ahead and activate this. Now what's nice about this theme and the reason I chose it is because they also have a free plugin that will essentially create an entire website for you in just a few mouse clicks and it's called Astra Sites. You can just do a search for the word Astra and here it is. I'm going to go ahead and install that right now. This is literally the fastest way to get a beautiful website and it's all completely free. Um, so I'm going to go ahead here and under appearance click on Astra Sites and it's going to show me a variety of sites that I can choose from. You can choose your page builder of choice and so the one that I want to choose is down here because I'm going to make a portfolio. So I thought, how about this web design studio website? So I'm going to click where it says details and preview. I'm going to click on install plugins. It's just going to take a moment and it's going to install these four plugins, essentially our page builder. Of course, I'm going to show you how to use uh, more than one page builder with pods and it's going to put this contact form this widgets is really for this button here in the header and you can do some other stuff with it and then to spruce up the page a little bit more it's going to add this ultimate add-ons for beaver builder light okay now that it put those four plugins i'm going to click on import site and i'm going to click on okay it's basically going to wipe everything out and put this beautiful site in its place and I just wanted to do it this way because I didn't want to use the kind of ugly default WordPress theme for what we're doing here. All right, so it's done. I can click on this X and you can see when I click on refresh that we're going to have this uh, beautifully designed website and it was really just a few mouse clicks to get this and it's a full website with different pages for the menu. There is literally no faster way to get a beautiful website. Okay. And everything was free so far. All right. So now let's get pods on our website. Plugins, add new. And then I'm going to do the search for pods. 
and here it comes up. So what I want you to do before moving forward, I'm not actually going to use this version. In the next week or two, they're going to have a new version that's released. Uh, so if you click on more details, and it says right here the version number, it says 2.6.11. Well, I want to use version 2.7, and it hasn't quite hit the repo yet. So if you're watching this video in about a month or two, and this says 2.7, go ahead and install it here but for the purposes of this video I'm gonna go to their website because I want to use this 2.7 version There's no sense of making a tutorial on a version that's gonna be replaced soon so for me I have to go ahead and click right here and it's gonna take me over to actually it just downloaded it right away for me so now I have it on my local computer and I can install it manually but like I said if this is version 2.7 for you go ahead and install it and you are off to the races and most likely that's what's gonna happen for you so for me now I have to click on upload plugin and then I have to drag and drop this over here it is on my computer I'm gonna just drag and drop and do this install now and it's gonna go ahead and install this version of pods. It has a lot of improvements and that's why I wanna use it for this tutorial. So I'm gonna go ahead and activate this now and it's gonna add this new option right here that says pods admin. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on it and we'll start digging into pods. So the first thing you're presented with is the option right here to create a new custom post type taxonomy or a custom settings page. Now I once made a video on this custom settings page but we're pretty much going to be in this post type category for this video. And this extend existing, this is if you want to add something called custom fields to maybe a blog post or a page or if you're using WooCommerce you want to add a custom field to the product pages you could do that as well with this extend existing but before we do that I want to go ahead and click on this components option to show you a couple options that you have available to you so here are some components that you can enable if you wanted to and one of them that I think is really neat is this option right here where it says migrate packages and what this is going to allow you to do is everything you do in one website you can easily and I'm talking about creating the custom post type and the custom fields with this enabled you can literally export and import it very easily to other websites so if you're a website developer or everything you just created you'd like to use on another website you could easily do that by enabling this so I'm going to go ahead and enable it and I'll show you how to do that after we've created everything but you can see right here it says migrate packages this wasn't there before but it's here now okay so now let's go back to add new and what we're gonna do first is we're gonna create a new custom post type so I'm gonna click on this option right here and then here is the option I would choose what I'm creating and by default it has this custom post type option chosen and then right here we need to create our labels or choose our label and I'm gonna go with the word portfolio however there really is no singular or plural way of saying portfolios it's not like for example the word reviews reviews you could say review it's singular and plural or the word to mean multiple review reviews was the word reviews but for portfolio it's the same uh, just keep that in mind with other custom post types you're you're creating so I'm going to show you portfolio and it's going to be the same for both I guess you could say for singular portfolio item or whatever but in this case I'm just going to put the same word in both so I'll enter that now actually on second thought I decided to just call the singular label portfolio item because I think it might make more sense and this is mostly used for the user interface here so I'm gonna go ahead and click on next step and it's gonna take me here so now I've created this new custom post type and here's a bunch of options for it but it first takes you here where we can create some 
custom fields that we want for this new custom post type. And if you notice here on the left, it now says portfolio and we can actually change this little icon here as well. So when I named it portfolio, uh, that's where this name is generated right here. So let's quickly take a look at these options and then we'll come back to manage fields and we'll go ahead and create some custom fields for the portfolio. So first I'm gonna look at labels. Now these are essentially just labels, what they look like here in the back end. Now, one thing I've noticed through my own personal usage of pods is you don't wanna be afraid of breaking something because you can always come back here and change it back. So don't be afraid of setting the wrong thing when you're trying things out. Really these are just the labels and we can change them to something else if we wanted it to say something else. So you know how when I hover over portfolio it says all portfolio, add new. These are all going to be set what the text is is going to be set here and these are just the various labels. I usually just leave this all the same. Okay, so now let's click on admin UI. Now these are more settings for how this is gonna visually appear and where it's gonna visually appear here on the admin bar. Now what I usually adjust here is I like to put a different menu icon instead of this, this thumbtack right here. And you can also change the menu position. I usually leave that the way it is, but you do have this granular control over that. So for the menu icon, you can hover over the question mark and then here's a link and it takes you over to a website where you can choose a different icon. So here it is right here and here's a variety of icons that we can choose from pretty much whichever one we want. So we, you can literally just come here and look through and choose one and instead of that thumbtack it will show the new icon that you've chosen. So I guess I'm just gonna go ahead and choose one. I'll just choose this random one right here. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click on it like this and then there it is. All you have to do is copy this little bit of text right here, put it into your clipboard and then when you come here, you can go ahead and paste it in like that and then click on save pod and we should see it change. See how it's not that thumbtack anymore. It's this different icon. It was pretty simple to do there and you can change this as much as you want. And if you didn't even want this custom post type in the navigation, you have options for that as well. But uh, just, you know, off to the different titles for these labels, you can just go ahead and click on the question mark like that and see what it says that this option does. And like I said, don't be afraid to test things. I can uncheck this and then if I don't like how it looks, I can check it right back. So there's nothing to worry about. Now let's take a look at these advanced options that we have. Now with some of these options, you may want to dig into them. So this would be if you want your custom post type to not be public. Now for me, I do want it to be public. I'm just making a portfolio and I want people to search, but you can do so many advanced things with pods and custom post types really uh, for your website. And there's times where you might wanna make something that you don't want on the front end of the website because you're linking that data in other locations. Here's another option, exclude from search. So if someone's searching on your website, if you don't want what is created in pods or this particular custom post type to show up, you can just go ahead and check this box and it won't show. And there's a variety of options here. Uh, if you want to have more control over how the custom post type operates, one of the ones I like to enable is this right here. So what this is gonna do is, you know how if you have a blog, you have what's called your blog archive page where you click on that and it shows a list of all of the blog posts. Well, this is the same thing to enable an archive page just for this custom post type. And then right here you can choose a unique slug for that. But for me, it's gonna go ahead and choose portfolio automatically. But if you wanted that to be something different, you can make that something different. So when I hover over here, it says by default, it's gonna be the slug, what, you, what we named the custom post type. And that's actually what I want. 
And there's just more control that you have here. I usually kind of leave this all pretty much the same, except right here, I will enable whatever features I want in that custom post type. And these are your typical features that you see in a blog post. So if I wanted to list the author, which I don't in this case, I would check this box. Uh, featured image, I do want that because I'm gonna have the portfolio item be that featured image. So I'm gonna go ahead and check that. Excerpt, if I wanted that, or trackbacks, custom fields, comments, you can go ahead. Revisions is always actually good. You can just go ahead and choose it by checking on this box here. Now, like I said before, you can, you can check it and then you can come back and uncheck it so don't be afraid to break something now right here where it says built-in taxonomies what this is is if you wanted categories so you can categorize your portfolio items or tags so you can put tags on these portfolio items you can do that by checking these boxes and it will use the whole the same categories and the same tags that you're creating for your posts now you can also go and create in pods a separate category section just for the portfolio and a separate section of tags that's just for the portfolio. So if you want that, you can check on it here and you can go ahead and create your own. All right, so I've made some changes here. I'm gonna go ahead and click on save pod and we're, we're making some progress here for sure. Now I never do anything in this auto template options right here and I've never really done anything here in the rest API options those are going to be your more advanced things right there so now let's go ahead and get into the process of creating custom fields now what I want to do first I want to go to portfolio and I want to click on add new and so it's going to look here it is it's going to look exactly like or very similar to when you want to add a new post or page but it's only showing those items that we selected so I didn't select have comments and have trackbacks and have excerpts and all of that so that's why right now I'm just getting the option of a title this text box right here when I scroll down the featured image I don't have categories here and tags here because I didn't enable those if I want them I can go and and enable them very easily and then they would show here on this page this right here this astro settings is really from the theme okay so that is what this looks like now when we add custom fields they're gonna appear in this space down here and that's just a good way to separate the information so there all the information isn't right here okay so I'm gonna go back to edit pods and I'm gonna go ahead and click on add field and we have this box here and there's these four tabs. So the first thing we're gonna do is give the name of the custom field or actually we're just gonna put the label. The name is gonna be auto generated and then we have the option here to choose a field type. So let me put a label in right now. So I put the word website in. I'm assuming that this is a portfolio of web design work. And when I'm putting website, I wanna actually have a link to the website. So you'll see when I click away and click on name, it automatically generates the name. Just leave what it auto generates. It's essentially gonna make everything lowercase and it's gonna put uh, replace spaces with a hyphen. You can put a description, I never do, maybe because I'm lazy. Okay, so let's take a look right here at field type, and it's a drop down right here. And uh, actually, it's not. It's getting a little cut off in my browser here, so sorry about that. So these are different field types we have. Plain text, website, which is a URL, which is what I'm gonna choose. A phone number, email address, and password. Now the reason you want to put a website here, a phone number here, and an email here is it's because it's going to retain that proper formatting for you, okay? And so for the phone number, you're not going to be able to put in letters. It's only going to take the phone numbers or the numbers. And then we have the paragraph options. So you can have a, a block for paragraph text. You can have this what you see is what you get visual editor and this is similar to what you already have in WordPress right here, right? Where you can uh, go visual and you can have text. So, and when it's on visual, you have these options. And so that's what that is, okay? 
and you have code, and this would just accept code in the block. I'll actually use this in the portfolio as a demonstration. You have date and time, date and time separately, numbers, currencies, and then down here we have some relationship options. We have file, image, and video. We have O-embed relationship. Sorry, it's getting cut off there. And then we have a yes or no option and a color picker. So these are the various field types that you can choose. So for me, I'm going website on this. And then right here, you can choose if you want it to be required. What that means is it won't save unless that's actually entered. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and click on additional field options. Now this is gonna dynamically change these, these field options based upon what f the field type actually is. So these are just field options for the field type that you chose. That's why for me, for format, it's showing, okay, what's the format here of the URL? So with this one here, I can pretty much put whatever I want. Here, it forces it to not have the www and um, et cetera, and that's just pretty much these options here. So I like this, it's just the, the proper format. And here's some other options. Uh, if you wanna allow a port in the URL, that's more of a technical thing. Output as a link, I'm gonna leave it like that and maximum length, so that's how many characters you can enter, and this enable HTML5 input field. Nope, we'll leave that the way it is, and the placeholder, we'll leave that the way it is. Then we have some advanced options right here, and this is uh, about styling it, and who can see the field option. I never usually mess with any of this, and for the visibility, I'm not using this for a client's website, but you might want to restrict things based based upon if you give your clients a login that is something other than an admin login, you can restrict the visibility of this. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on save field and we have this new field here and I'm gonna go ahead and click on save pod and it's gonna save it. So now when I go back here, we don't have an options, any options down here, but if I click on refresh just like this, you can see now it's listing these additional fields and we have this asterisk next to it because it wants a website, it needs to be in there. And that's how easy it is to add custom fields and you can add as many as you want and you can rearrange them with this little handle here on the side so that they're in the order that you want them to be right here. So the next custom field I'm gonna add is, I'm gonna, I don't know, I think I might wanna spruce this sucker up. I'm a video guy, let's uh, put a video in there. So I'm gonna go on add field like this, and I'm gonna call this, for this label, I'm gonna put video. And then you could get away with putting a video in lots of different ways, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just put it in a code syntax highlighting like this. Now, if it's just gonna be YouTube, you could get away with putting it in the plain text field here, and that's actually what I do on some of my websites. But if it's a, a uh, video embed code, which is typically referred to as an iframe, where you may have Vimeo and they give you a whole big snippet of code, or I use something called Voo Player and I get this big old snippet of code, I find that this is the better field for it, this code syntax highlight. And uh, actually, let me go back. I wanna make that required. Now let's take a look at the different field options. And if I wanted to allow short codes in here, I would enable this. I don't actually want to do that. And for the maximum length, you could see it's defaulting here to zero. I think that might mean unlimited. I'm gonna test that out right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on save field on this one. And now we have the two fields here. I'm gonna do a save pod and I'm gonna do a refresh here on the different, uh, the, the portfolio item. And so you can see it looks like a code enter. I can just go ahead and enter my, my, my code right there. And it will um, do the cool things with the code where it changes the colors on certain parts of it. And uh, one thing I wish is there was more control over the height of this box, but I am not getting that. Uh, 
there might be a setting for that that I'm not aware of. And like I said, you can rearrange these. So if I wanted to go like this, now videos above website, click on save pod, and I'll go to the front end, do a quick refresh, and you can see that the order has changed for these two. I actually bet I could tweak it to get it half the size. And I think on my website, I do have it half the size. I use that particular field. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and start adding some of these custom fields real quick. Okay, so I didn't wanna be too complicated here. I just have these four custom fields. I put cost, and this would just be the cost of the project. I put industry. And of course you saw me do video and website. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll with that. I'm gonna go ahead and click on save pod. And when I come here and do a quick refresh, you're gonna see that here's my fields. I've got these four fields and I really have more pieces of info than that. I've got my title. I've got this block here of text that I'm gonna put with the portfolio. I've got cost, industry, video, website, and then I have this option here to put a featured image. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and put three different portfolio items in here, and then we can see how this looks on the front end. Okay, so I've created these three portfolio entries and you can see what I put here for the title. Let me go ahead and click on that first one I created, Dietitian. I'm gonna go ahead and click here and you can see that I put a little bit of text here for the title, some here in the paragraph. I put a cost, an industry, I put a video link right there, embed code, and I put a website URL and I put an image. And that's what I did for all three of these items right here. I did that for all three of them. Now let's see what they look like on the front end of the website. So I'll go ahead to the dietitian. I'll go ahead and open up the, the view link right here in a different tab. And so you can see how it looks by default. Now this is really gonna be treated just like a blog post, okay? So we have the featured image, we have the title, and we have this bit of text here, and it's not showing the custom fields just yet. So this, how it looks right now, is largely based upon the theme that you're using and the options that they give you on how to display the content for blog posts. And there it is right here. And notice the URL, it's the front part of the URL, and then it says portfolio item, and that's the slug, it gives these individual portfolio items. And then right here, it says the, it's pulling in the title that I created for this custom post type right here that I created this portfolio item. You have control over this middle slug. So we didn't have to choose the word portfolio item. And you can even change this to be something different even though it's portfolio item in the back end. So you can play around and have full control over all of that. Now let's see what it looks like when we're looking at that archive page. So right now that is gonna be just removing this part right here. We're probably gonna wanna change it. So this is how it's looking right now. We might wanna change this. It should just say portfolio instead of portfolio item. So in this process, we're gonna go ahead and uh, make a tweak to that. And you can see it says archives portfolio, and this is largely dictated by your theme as well. Whatever the default styles that they offer for archive pages, that's pretty much how it's going to end up looking. And so you can see the three that we created here. Now, we've done a lot, actually. Uh, it's very powerful. You can see we've created this separate category here of content called portfolio, and uh, you can store data in here, and it's gonna be separate from posts and pages, and it's gonna make a real nice and tidy experience back here. And what we wanna do now is let's fix those minor things like this slug from saying portfolio item to say portfolio. Let's go ahead and fix that. And then we're gonna look at changing the way that the individual portfolio items look here. And then we'll look at making some tweaks to the 
archive page that we have. So, okay, I'm going to go back here to where we had our pod. Now, it's going to be under, I think it was under advanced options. So right here it says enable archive page, and it says archive page slug override. So right here I'm going to go ahead and put the word portfolio. Realistically, you can put anything you want here. I'm going to go ahead and click on save pod. And then right here, oops, let me go right here. Let's do a quick refresh. And let's see what happens when we now go back to where it was portfolio item. Yep, that's what I was expecting because we changed the slug to be portfolio and then here it is so you want to pay attention to slugs to have a slug that not only makes sense to a visitor but also makes sense to google from an seo perspective and portfolio just fits a lot better for the archive page than having it say portfolio item so now uh, let's go ahead and click back into one and we're looking at the makeup artist let me show you how to get those custom field values in here Okay, so that was Makeup Artist, and here we are. So now if we're going to use just this text editor to display those custom fields right here, the way Pods does it is via short codes, and they have this option here so we can figure out what those short codes are. But once you already know the format of the short code, you won't need to click on this. You'll be able to just modify some of the text in the short code. So let's go ahead and take a look at it by clicking here. And the first question is to see what you want to do. And you can display, we, this is what we want actually. We want to display a field from this particular item. And then right here, we'd want to put the field name. So for me right now, I'll go ahead and enter cost and then I'm going to go ahead and click on insert and then there it puts it in I think it might need to be lowercase let's check so I'm going to go ahead and click on update here and then let's go to the front end and let's do a quick refresh and it's going to appear down here actually did that even refresh okay there we go yeah I think it uh, wasn't formatted properly I think I need to go lowercase like this and let's see what happens now. Okay, I'm doing a refresh, makeup artist, makeup artist, and I'm gonna do a refresh, there it is. Okay, so yes, it was case sensitive like I imagined. If I go back to the original pod, here is that field name that it's looking for. So I put the label, which was the capital C. You really wanna use exactly what it says right here for it to display. And you notice since I chose the field type currency, it it formatted it to a currency like that okay so we have that that's nice so really to show the next other four or three custom fields we just can go ahead and do a quick copy and paste like this and then change the slug so the next one was industry and I just went ahead and filled them all out I'm gonna go ahead and click on update and now when I go to the front end and do a refresh we have it all right here okay right here we have the industry and then right here we have the video and I used an embed code now this video I have a strict video security and it realizes I'm trying to play a video on an unauthorized URL um, this is so people don't steal my videos uh, and then right here I have the website address so on the surface you can go ahead and try to work within these parameters to make this look the way you want but it's gonna be a little hard to make it look pretty and uh, I don't do it this way myself so what you might want to do is use a page builder but if you notice the problem right here is there's no option for a page builder in the beginning of this video I put a page builder in and usually you would see an option here and so most page builders when you install them by default they're only configured to work on either just pages or pages and posts but there'll be an option in 
in the page builders setting panel to go in there and enable it on custom post types and in this one more specifically portfolio so I'm going to actually show you how to go about doing that right now using beaver builder since it's the page builder I have installed right now so beaver builder has settings under the settings panel and then page builder so I'm going to go ahead and open that settings panel up and you can see right here it says post types and then here is uh, where you can choose which post types to show it on. So by default, it's just pages, but we can check this box here for portfolio and then click on save post type. Now it's gonna be very similar using Elementor and it's gonna be very similar using Divi where you would just go ahead and enable it. And I'd imagine on most page builders, it's gonna be pretty much the same. So right here I am where I can edit this portfolio item. If I do a refresh on this page, page, you're going to see we now have the page builder option right there and we can start using that to create a nice layout where we're dropping these short codes kind of in a layout where we'd want to, to do it. And the same way is gonna work with Elementor. As a matter of fact, let me just go ahead and pop Elementor in really quick just so you can see how that works with a different page builder. Okay, so I've downloaded, installed, and activated Elementor. And yes, for the record, you can have more than one page builder on the same site. It's just not recommended to use more than one page builder on the same page. Page. So I get that question a lot. So in Elementor, if I go here, let's see, it's probably in the settings here. It shouldn't be up. Oh, there it is, post types. And so by default, Elementor is going to be enabled for posts and pages. And if I click on this right here, it's now going to be available here on this particular custom post type. So when I do a refresh, we'll probably see the edit with Elementor button option right there. And so this is how you're going to get the option to create unique layouts on a one by one individual basis using one of these page builders right here. That's one way of doing it. Now, since you're probably going to want all of the various portfolio options or all the content we're going to create and put in this portfolio custom post type, you're probably going to want the layout to be the same on all of them. It can be kind of a pain in the rear end to manually add a layout to each and every item as you add it. Now certainly if you don't have a lot of items you're going to put in here, it's totally doable to, to manually on a one-on-one -on -one basis go into the page builder on each individual item, load up a template or whatever that you have saved. And it's pretty much going to be doable because these stay the same on every single item that you create in this portfolio. These don't stay the same. These don't change. It doesn't say cost hyphen makeup artist. So you couldn't use that on a different item in the portfolio. Now that's manageable and it's definitely a more budget friendly way of making these portfolio items look beautiful. Now that's not the way that I use it. There's now options where you can create a template that applies to all of the items. And the benefit of that, if you have one template, so you create the design one time and you apply it to everything that is a portfolio item, it makes it more manageable to go and make a change later on. You can go later and say you want to change a color or just change some position positioning, you would only do it to the one template. But if you go into each portfolio item and go into edit it with your page builder, what happens is what happens when you want to change a color or remove something, you have to manually go into each and every single one to do it. It could be very, very tedious and it could be overwhelming depending on how many portfolio you items you have. So by far, the superior, more efficient way of doing this would be to simply simply create a template that is applied to portfolio items. Now there's a 
a coder way of doing it, hand coding a template. That is not my way of doing things, and that's not the way that I talk about doing things on this channel. So I'm gonna show you how you can create these templates. Now, you can actually do it for Elementor or for Beaver Builder. Now, with Elementor, you have to buy something. It's gonna be $25. With Beaver Builder, you have to purchase something called Beaver Themer. On my website, I'm using the Beaver Themer way of doing it. Uh, it's just a bit more superior. So let me go ahead and demonstrate this. I'm gonna do it with Elementor first because it's gonna be really fast because it's a bit more limiting. So you have to go ahead and get this plugin called Anywhere Elementor Pro. It's 25 bucks for a single site license and then 99 for unlimited sites. So I already have it on my computer here. I'm just gonna go ahead and install it really quick and show you how that works. So I'm gonna go drag and drop, click on install now, and then after this I'm gonna show you how cool it is to do it with Beaver Builder and Beaver Themer. So it's called Anywhere Elementor Pro. I'm gonna click on activate, just like this. And I'm not gonna pop my license key in, I do have one. And so now you have this new option right here called AE Templates. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna click all AE Templates. So basically we're gonna create an Anywhere Elementor Global Template. It's gonna be real simple. I'm gonna click Add New and let's just name this Portfolio Template. There it is, Portfolio Item Template. So we'll just name it like that. And then right here, we're gonna choose where we're gonna apply this template. So when I go to this drop down, I'm gonna choose right here where it says Post Template. I'm pretty sure that's it. And then right here, I can choose my post type. And so we know it's Portfolio like this. And we can choose a preview post. And so let's make it the Makeup Artist. There it is. I chose Makeup Artist like that and then I'm gonna go ahead and click on publish okay so I just created this portfolio item template so now what happens is I'm gonna click on edit with Elementor it's gonna pop over in Elementor right now and one of the things I love about the Astro theme it knows if you're using a page builder and it automatically will make it full width get rid of your sidebar get rid of your page title it's one of the things I really love about using this Astra theme so I'm gonna show you this really really quick so now you can start basically creating your page layout so anywhere Elementor Pro added these items right here so if I wanted to add the title I can just drag and drop that right there and there is the title I can style that up but if you notice I'm using anywhere Elementor's modules I'm not using the Elementor ones it doesn't work like that so you're limited to these modules here here that come with Anywhere Elementor. So let me get to the nitty gritty and it's really showing how to get the custom field data in this layout. So the way I'm gonna do that is actually here, let's go ahead and get the post image and this is pulling from the featured image and so we can do that. And now what I wanna do is choose this custom field option that it has right here. There it is, AE custom field. So I'm gonna go like this and do AE custom field and I need to put that same field name. Now remember, it's gonna be right here. These are our field names. So let me just put industry. So I'm gonna type right here, industry. And there it is, industry, and you can see now it's pulled it in, and then I can go here and start styling it. But like I said, you're you're limited to the options here. Now for the other different field types, I can just choose right here what field type that it is. Now the only thing that I've always said about this solution, why it's not the greatest, is because I can't use the Elementor modules. I'm stuck using these right here, which aren't as feature deep as you get with Elementor itself. So this is how you would go and make a beautiful layout. And this will now apply to the makeup artist, the electrician, all of the different portfolio items. This template will 
uh, will apply to it. Actually, here, let's just go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and click on save and let's go ahead and get out of here. Let's uh, do a go to dashboard and then we're right back here. Let's see if it applied. It might not have applied. Let's see if it did. Okay, it didn't. I think I have to choose this option here that said auto apply. Let me do an update like this. And then I'm going to go here, do a refresh and up. Oh, see, there it is. It auto applied right, right there. Now, because Astra doesn't see that I'm using a page builder on this page right here, it kept these options there off to the side where I would have to go ahead and edit those. Okay. So that, that is okay. Well, let me actually go to, um, the index page here and show you how that's the makeup artist. But if I click right here into the electrician, it's going to be the same thing. So now every portfolio I, item I add is going to have this layout. So this was doing it with anywhere Elementor. Let me remove this and disable this and disable Elementor. And I'm going to show you how to do it with Beaver Builder right now. So I'm going to go to plugins. And I'm going to go ahead and deactivate this. And while I'm at it, I'll just deactivate Elementor. And Elementor, you're great. I just want to deactivate. Okay, so now when I go back here and I do a refresh, it should reset back to the default layout. Okay, so for Beaver Builder, I'm going to need to go and install Beaver Themer. I'm going to go to Add New. Now, I have links to everything down below. Don't worry. I'll have links to Beaver Builder, Beaver Themer, Elementor, Pods, all of it. So I already have Beaver Themer. It's a plugin downloaded to my computer. Now, Beaver Themer, it's not an inexpensive plugin. It's $147. So it's about $47 more than that Anywhere Elementor Pro plugin that I just showed you. So, okay, let me just grab it here from my computer. I'm going to drag and drop, do a quick install. It's going to take a moment. Now, here's the thing. There is a user in the Beaver Builder community named Bernard, and, and I'm probably pronouncing his name just a little off. Uh, he created an integration between pods and Beaver Themer that makes this process unbelievably powerful and easy. Okay, so we're going to want to add that plugin. So I'm going to go to add new. And when you type the word pods in the search, check out what we have right here. Pods Beaver Themer add on. And uh, this is amazing. So I'm going to go ahead and click on install now. And then I'm going to go ahead and activate this. All right, so now when I go back to my portfolio and I go into my portfolio item, we should just have Beaver Builder as an option, but we're not going to actually use Beaver Builder on these pages. We can actually remove it because instead we're going to use Beaver Themer and we're going to go ahead and make a global template to apply to all of these. All right, so I'm going to do a quick hard refresh. I'm going to go back into settings. I'm going to go into page builder and I'm going to just remove it from the post type right here and I'll click on save post types. I actually just realized something. There should be a beaver builder option here and I, I didn't actually install the paid version of beaver builder. I just left the free Elementor. So let me go back to plugins. That's why I don't see my beaver builder option. So if we see here, you can see I've got the free version of beaver builder and that's not what I want. I've got the to install the paid version. So I'm going to go to add new upload plugin. And here we go. There's Beaver Builder. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and click on install now. And now I'm going to get those Beaver Themer options that I was looking for. What you want to do though, if you're switching from the light version to the paid version of Beaver Builder, you need to deactivate the light version. So right here uh, is giving me some warnings on that. And what I need to do is go ahead and deactivate the light version. And you can also go ahead and delete it as well. And now I'm using what I needed, which was the standard version right here. And I should be good to go. So now I'm going to do a quick refresh of the page. 
Okay, and because I activated Beaver Themer before having the paid version of Beaver Builder in, you need to deactivate and then reactivate Beaver Themer. And then what happens is you're going to now have this builder option right here. This is what you get. It's unique to Beaver Themer. And this is where we can start unlocking and playing with the power of Beaver Themer. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Builder. And I'm going to create a theme layout. So I'll click on add new and then I'm going to go ahead and put my title in. There we go. Portfolio item template and Beaver Themer is super powerful. You can create lots of different things. So I'm going to choose the theme layout right here. And then for layout, I'm going to go ahead and choose singular. So I'm going to go and click on add theme layout. Now right here is where we choose what this layout's going to apply to. So for location, I'm going to go ahead and choose right here where it says portfolio item. And right here, you can just have it be specific portfolio items or all of them. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this to all portfolio items like that. For all users, you have some amazing targeting rules with Beaver Themer here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and click on publish. And then I'm going to click on launch page builder. And now we're going to be inside of Beaver Builder 2.0, which just launched. Since I haven't gone into the builder in this install, it gives me this prompt. I'll just go ahead and click no thanks. So Beaver Themer already automatically applies this layout right here. And it's pulling in the featured image and it's putting it in the background like that. And it's pulling in the title and it's putting the title in there like that. But what I want to show you is this amazing thing called field connections. And that's what we're going to use to pull in the pods data. So what you want to do is click this plus and it pulls up all of the modules. So for example, let's pull in the video module and I will just, uh, I'll just drop it right here. Why not? And then I get this here. Actually, I made a mistake. I want to put my video in, but I want to use the HTML module. So I'm going to go here and there it is, HTML module like that. I'll just drop it here. It doesn't really matter where I drop it. And this is the amazing power of Beaver Themer is this, this plus here. This is called a field connection. So when I click on the plus, it gives me the option to connect all of these various commonly used fields that are related to posts like the title. So if I wanted to put the title someplace else, I can do that. And there's all these options. But because of that pods integration, when I scroll down, we have pods options right here. So I want to connect in a field. So I'm going to click on connect. And then right here, I can just choose my field and I'm going to use the video, which is code. I'm going to click on save and then I'm going to click on save. And there's my video. You see how easy that was? Oops, there it is. There's my video. And that's the beauty of this field connection concept that Beaver Builder pioneered. Now, what we can do is some amazing stuff. Now, Remember how with the Elementor I was showing you, you're limited to just what they give you. But because of this field connection, I can pull in that pods data in any of these modules. So for instance, I wanna make a beautiful button. Well, I can use this button module right here that comes with Beaver Builder. I can put it right there. And then here's a field connection for text. So I can use any value in pods for the text for the button. And also when I scroll down right here for the link, I can do a field connection. So I click on my plus, I scroll all the way down to pods URL field, click on connect, and it's gonna know, and this is the first the beauty of this plugin. It, it knows which of those custom fields I created in pods contain a URL. Uh, so remember we chose website, which is a properly formatted URL. So I can go like that, click on save, click on save, 
And now up here, I've got my button. Uh, looks like I need to put some text there or change the color of the text. But you get the point uh, right here is that with these field connections, I can use these existing modules. Let me go ahead and fix the style on this. I already know it's going to bug me. So I've got the text color. Let's just go ahead and make that a dark color like that and then click save. Okay, that would have bothered me. All right, so now this button because of these field connections, it's all ready to go. All right, and the same thing goes for price, but not only does this work with Beaver Builder, but there's two very powerful add-on packages for Beaver Builder. One is called Ultimate Add-ons for Beaver Builder, and the other one's called Power Pack, and you can use these field connections with both of those as well. So right here, I'm looking at the standard modules, but I can switch them to, I just happen to have ultimate add-ons for Beaver Builder in here right now, so I can use it with that as well. So I can put this information in a flip box if I wanted to. So let me just drop in a quick flip box. It's probably not gonna look right. Um, so here I can, uh, with my title, instead of this, let's flip, I can use maybe the industry. So I can go to pods, connect, and let's just choose industry like that. Click on save. And then maybe here, instead of this bit of text, I can remove that. And let's, I don't know, let's put the cost in. Let's go here, let's connect the cost. And oh, it's already right there, cost for me. Click on save click on save and so it's going to show the uh, the industry and it has the cost right there and that's perfect so what you're seeing is you have the ability to connect these custom field data points into any existing supported Beaver Builder module and also the modules that come with the various add-on pack providers. It's just extremely, extremely powerful. And that's all thanks to that add-on that was created. So obviously this is a horrible looking portfolio. It's not showcasing anything. Let me do a quick done and publish. And I'm gonna go here, do a quick refresh, and you can see it's just, there it is. It's pulling in the background. I've got a formatted button. I have this flip box and I have this video here and I can literally lay it out. So now when I want to go and create a new portfolio item, it's just going to grab this beautiful layout that you're creating. And the beauty is if I want to change something and obviously I'd want to change a whole heck of a lot here, all I have to do is edit the one template we created using Beaver Themer. It's really that easy, guys. It's uh, so powerful, Beaver Themer, what you're able to do when you pair it up with pods. Now, I've only really scratched the surface. There are very powerful fields here. So I didn't show you galleries. So if you wanted to, right here, I could have chosen file image video and then I could have gone right here and I could have cho chosen the options for instead of a single file, it's gonna be multiple files. So you're essentially creating a gallery of images that you can beautifully display in one of the add-on pack or Beaver Builder modules. And it's pretty much as easy as that to create a template that you can apply to all your portfolio items. Now, the same concept applies to making the archive page. Remember, we looked at the archive page. Uh, let me get to it really quick. And there's nothing special. It's uh, really just dependent upon your theme. And it doesn't look great. But we can use this same thing with pods to create a beautifully designed layout page. Here, let's uh, just do that really quick. I'll show you how to do that. So I'm gonna go to add new, and let's just call this portfolio index page. There it is, and I'm gonna choose theme layout, and for layout, I'm gonna choose an archive. I'll click add theme layout, and so I want to apply this to the portfolio item archive page like that. I'll click on publish and then I'm gonna go ahead and click on launch builder like this. Now I have full control over how I want this to look. 
so I can start editing what it default gives me here. Or you can just literally click right here and you can have all these different options. So for layout, if I wanted to make it a gallery, I could do that. Now there's obviously not that much info there, but here we have it as a gallery with the featured images. We can do Manson Re like this. There's different post layout options right here. You see how powerful that is. And also if you have one of the various add-on packages, they have a even more powerful post grid builder. The one that comes with ultimate add-ons and power pack, they are very, very powerful and they give you a lot of flexibility on how this is going to look. But this right here already is a massive improvement, right? So now when I go here, this is what it looked like generated by the theme. I do a quick refresh and now look at it. It just looks beautiful. I mean, it just looks good. And you can also pull these into, say, your homepage or something like that and just have it pull in your portfolio item and you can do some really, really neat things there. So that is really what I wanted to show you today with pods. Now, what I didn't show you was these, this really cool migrate packages option. So we already went and created this pod. I can go here, I can click on export, and I want to export the, the only custom post type I created, click on continue, and then bam, See this gibberish of text? All you have to do is copy and paste this to another site. And instead of clicking export under migrate packages, you would instead click on import and you just paste that bit of text in and then bam, it's going to bring in portfolio with the icon you chose, the custom fields and everything. So there's this, this portability that is available. So this essentially, guys, is how you can take any WordPress website and do a whole heck of a lot more of it, have full control to create a beautiful portfolio or any type of separate content. It's super easy to do that. And you can extend with custom fields, your posts, your pages, or if you're like me, I use lifter LMS and essentially that's just a custom post type. And I use Beaver themer to create a, and I use custom fields from pods to create a totally unique unique learner experience using everything that I taught in this video. It's just doing it with pods. This stuff might be a little overwhelming, right? Because when you go into pods here, there's like a million setting options, but you don't have to be afraid to break something because you can always come back in here and change it later. So I don't want you to feel afraid of messing something up or breaking something because you can easily change the setting right back. Now, sadly, I've only really scratched the surface of what you can do with pods. There's a whole heck of a lot more that you're able to do with pods of relationships and passing data back and forth, connecting post types. There's so many things you can do, but this is what I wanted to share with you to get you going, to get you up and running, to get it started for you. I can't wait to hear what you create. So there you have it. That's how you create custom post types, custom fields, and also style those items to make them look beautiful and even covered creating an archive page. Now, I talked about a lot of products in this video, and if you want to get more training around Beaver Builder, I have a course on my website called Beaver Builder Essentials. Now, I typically, it's available for sale, but I typically give this away as a gift if you purchase Beaver Builder or Beaver Themer through the link on my website and the link will be in the video description box. If you do purchase Beaver Builder through that link, I will give you access to this $200 training course and I go over Beaver Themer in more details and I also go through the relationships that you can create using pods. So, but this video was enough to really get you off to the races to start creating some amazing things with your website. I also have the same offer for Elementor users and it's all the information's on my website. I typically have links in the footer here, uh, right here where it says uh, the different bonuses available. I've got one for Astra, Beaver Builder, Beaver Themer, Elementor, and a hosting bonus. And while I'm here at the bottom, check this out. Right here is product reviews, and guess what? 
This is a custom post type that I've set up. So that is all that I have for you in this video. Everything is linked in the video description box for you to come to all these links on my website and all the links to the, the products that I talked about. And if you have any questions, I really want to do my best to answer them. You can ask them in the comment section here on YouTube, but I also have a forum on my website where you can ask the questions there and also search questions there. It's a little easier to ask and find other people, other answers I've given to questions here than it is on YouTube because YouTube's just a very long comment section. So feel free to jump over here and ask me in the forum I have on my website. So that's all I have for you in this video. If you found value, please share it on Facebook, on Twitter. If you see someone asking, how do I create a portfolio or how do I do this? Please send them to this video and I would really appreciate it. That's how you can help me out. And also don't forget if you're new here, consider clicking on the subscribe button and to not miss anything, click on the bell off to the right of that. That's all I got for you in this video. I'll see you in the next pods video.